very big thing that often gets overlooked on your mental health journey is the importance of purpose. If you want to be self-actualized, if you want to be mentally healthy, if you want to be operating at your highest level, you have to have a clear purpose. Many people have asked through centuries, what is the meaning of life? But when they ask this question, they're really asking the wrong question. Instead, they should be asking, how can I add meaning to my life? It's not what is the purpose of life. It's how can I live a life of purpose? You see, the purpose or meaning of your life is what you assign to it. Your life is simply a gift. It is an endowment that you have received. So what you will do with it is up to you. It's like looking at a piece of wood and saying, what is the purpose of wood? Wood is what you use it for. You can start a fire. You can build a house. What are you going to use the wood for? That's really more the question. Not what is the purpose of wood. So it's not what is the purpose of life. It's it's how will I live a purposeful, meaningful life? That's the question you should be asking. So you want to take your journal, piece of paper, a marker in your mirror, something somewhere. You need to write down one to three things that you are trying to accomplish. These are the things that you ultimately want to accomplish in your life. And don't don't go crazy racking your brain because understand with time, these things will evolve. They will grow and evolve in time. So they'll change slightly. So, so you don't have to nail it on the first try, but you have to have a general sense of where you're going and what you want to accomplish. So many people say, uh, well, you know, I, I would like to uh, become an author or I want to become an actor or I want to become a mailman or I want to be a, a postal worker or, or a doctor, right? So they, they give themselves a dream or an actual goal that they are striving towards. Uh, some go a little bit deeper than that. Uh, One woman said, I want to be more Christ-like. Some people say, I would like to become self-actualized or I want to be truly happy. And some people say, well, I would like to have a family. So it's, it's not to differentiate who's got a better purpose than the next person. It's just for you to decide for yourself what you want, who you want to be, what you want to achieve. Let me tell you why this is so important. Your mental health comes down to having adaptive behaviors and thoughts. Mental disorder is diagnosed based on a series of maladaptive behaviors and thoughts. Adaptive and maladaptive is just what works and what doesn't work. If something can be perceived as sabotaging you or your life, then that's looked at as being maladaptive. It doesn't work. If something can be looked at as helpful to yourself in your life, it brings you towards your purpose and it's harmonious with the universe, it's looked at as adaptive. And to that end, you want to make sure first you have an adaptive purpose, something that is going to be in harmony with mankind at large. It can be something that is both for you and for them, but it needs needs to be harmonious with the universe, not something that is ultimately destructive to other people. So obviously a maladaptive uh, life goal is, I would like to commit genocide. That would not be an adaptive life goal. You need to rethink that. Ultimately, that causes destruction. It will not be helpful to the people around you. It will be hurtful. And ultimately, it will end up being hurtful to you as well. An adaptive life goal is something that works well and is harmonious for everyone, including yourself. It's also maladaptive if it's so self-deprecating and so uh, you're ignoring yourself to the extent that it's actually not going to work out because you've burnt yourself out. Like if you have an idea like, I just want to hold four jobs simultaneously, and that's your goal, 
people. You're actually going to burn yourself out in the process of doing that. It's maladaptive. It has to work for you, for your benefit, as well as for the universe at large. Hopefully that makes sense. So identify what is your goal. What are your goals? Just one to three is all you need. Now, this is important because when you are analyzing if a behavior is either adaptive or maladaptive, something that's maladaptive is going to be something that doesn't help you towards your goal. Something that's adaptive is going to be something that helps you get to where you're trying to go. That's adaptive behavior. That's what you're going for. So when you're analyzing, okay, um, you know what? I'm mad at my husband, so I'm not going to come home from work. Is that an adaptive behavior to not come home from work and to just instead go hide and, and go hang out with your girlfriends or something like that? Is that adaptive? One of the ways you can see if it's adaptive or maladaptive is by measuring it against your life goals. If your life goal was to have a family, a happy family life, now does not coming home because you're mad at your husband help you towards your goal? Well, not really. Then it's maladaptive and you shouldn't do it. This is why we need to have a clear goal because the clear goal is what helps us determine if something is maladaptive or adaptive. Otherwise, it can be a little blurry to know, well, is this right? Is this, I feel like it's right. I feel like I should do this. Ask yourself, does this help me towards my goal? Because if it doesn't help me towards my goal, then it's maladaptive. So let's say you're in the situation you're feeling like you don't want to go home. You analyze, well, no, it doesn't help me toward my goal to not go home. Okay, what would be adaptive? Well, my ultimate goal is to have a family, so probably to go home and, and, and explain to him how I'm feeling. Very good. That's adaptive thinking. What about if you receive a message from your boyfriend that says, hey, I have to cancel our date? Well, you could text him back and say, I knew you were going to do this. I knew this was going to happen. I should have never got with you. Why don't you go ahead and do whatever it is that's so much more important to you. I'm done. And then you block him and you leave. Is that adaptive behavior? It's not. Well, analyze your goal and you'll see. Okay, well, if your goal was ultimately to have a happy family life that did not work towards your ultimate goal. Typically, that maladaptive behavior was based on the old goals of trying to survive and trying to avoid getting hurt. And when you're just trying to survive and trying to avoid getting hurt, that works if you're in a emergency, war-torn-like situation, but in civilian life. You can't live your entire life just doing things to keep yourself from getting hurt and to try to survive. It's maladaptive. Then you'll be jumping on the ground whenever you hear a car backfire. And you'll be uh, acting like everything is an emergency that's not really an emergency. You'll be perceiving every slight as a very large affront to your life and your character because you're still in PTSD. It's post traumatic stress. You're responding from that. Now you need to pause that, that response uh, style and you have to start responding according to your goals. So now you're driven by your dreams, not by your fears. You're driven by love, not by fear and anxiety. So ultimately align with your purpose. No, texting my boyfriend a mean message like that and blocking him does not get me to my goals and my purpose and where I want to be in life. What would? Telling him, oh, I'm so sad, but I understand. 
Maybe we can talk more about it when you get home or when we get, get, get an opportunity. So, so focus on getting your purpose written down. Have that in front of you and know what your actual dream is, what it is you're actually going for. And then you can start to align your behavior around your purpose and identify if it's actually adaptive, working towards your purpose, or maladaptive, taking you away from it.